Hello, Father's Faithful. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. If you notice, I'm wearing the same clothes that I wore last week because we are actually on vacation next week. So I won't be here to record a lesson, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a lesson. Last week we talked about being lost and how God is always seeking for us and trying to find us. We talked about the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. So I'd like to read a story that I actually wrote several years ago as a column in the dispatch when I was a columnist. And I included it in my book called Muddy Feet on the Narrow Path. But I would like to read this story to you because it goes along with that lesson. It is about a time when my boys were young and lost. I'm going to read it to you now. The title is, Let the Good Shepherd Bring You Home If You're Lost. Are you lost? I looked at the wandering young man with questioning eyes. From my morning duty post at the middle school where I teach, I am getting really good at picking out the kids who are roaming the halls, choosing to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. With a snort, the boy turned back in the direction of his homeroom and trudged to his class. Was he really lost? No. He knew where he was supposed to be. He had made a conscious choice to be somewhere else. I knew that. And by the looks of things from my morning duty perspective, he's not the only one making the choice to get lost on the way to class in the mornings. It is a common concern among the teachers at my school. Of course, it's usually the same students over and over who get lost. Just a handful who make life hard for those of us who are responsible for them every minute of every school day. The truth is they seem to enjoy being lost until they are caught and suffer major consequences. Some of them put a lot of effort into not being found. Not me. I've been lost once or twice myself, but I can't ever remember getting lost on purpose. Call me directionally challenged. Maybe I just don't pay attention. Whatever the reason, I know one thing. I don't like being lost. I don't like the warm flush that begins at the base of my neck and rises until my face glows with panic. I don't like not being where I'm supposed to be. I remember the days when my own children were young. It was hard to keep three preschool boys under tow. Because I only had two hands, there was always one boy on the loose. The boy who was free from my grip was never concerned about the fact that he could get lost when we were in the grocery store or the mall. It was always me guarding and protecting, making sure he didn't stray. In his mind, as long as he knew where he was, why should it matter so much to his mommy? But there were times when the boys were lost, and they knew it. For years, they have recounted a harrowing experience of being lost in the woods. They can all laugh about it now, but at the time, it was very scary. The details are a little sketchy, and I still don't know everything that happened. I wasn't there. But... From their accounts, they were visiting their older cousin. I think he was about 11 at the time. They remember a rope, and somehow the rope was left in the woods, and they needed it. Thinking they would retrieve the rope quickly, they all traced back into the woods to get it, but somehow they got turned around. Hours passed, and they knew that the sun would be going down soon. That's when the panic set in, according to the boys. They had followed their cousin around and around like little ducks in a row. After all, these were his woods. A right turn would have put them in his backyard, where they had started. But a wrong turn would put them near a busy road. They heard the whir of the cars as they passed and knew that they were close to the edge of the woods. But their cousin thought that he would be in trouble if he came out of the woods any place except his yard, so he wouldn't even consider 
leaving the woods any other way. In my oldest son's version, he saved the day. He was the one who saw the light and insisted that his brothers rise up in mutiny against their cousin and follow him until they reached the light. In my middle son's rendition, he spotted a telephone pole and screaming and crying, broke away from the group and headed for safety. My youngest son was too little to remember anything except that he began to cry. And when they finally emerged from the dark, scary woods, his uncle, who had been driving his car up and down the road searching for them, saved them from being lost forever. Their cousin blamed the rope for the whole mess. Perhaps you have your own version of a similar story. Maybe you've been physically lost yourself. Maybe someone you love has strayed off the narrow path and found themselves lost in doubt or rebellion, unable to admit even to themselves how lost they really are. If that's the case, remember the uncle in the story. Even when the boys didn't know it, he was searching for them. Like the good shepherd in the Bible, he was searching for the one who wouldn't admit he was lost and for the one who followed the others and couldn't find his own way. He was searching for the one who was frightened and for the one who didn't know where to turn. He searched until he found them and took them safely home. Are you lost too? Someone is searching for you. Are you ready to be found? There is safety in the arms of the Good Shepherd. Why don't you let him carry you home today? Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week with a new Sunday School lesson. Have a good week.